Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast, but live for us, not for you. You still had to download it. But I uh, am Pastor Goodman, and here with the Executive Director of Higher Things, Erica Jacoby, who in a former life taught kids. You know, they let me. They give me a license and everything. It's crazy. You know uh, so one of the things then that we've been kind of talking about is something called a logical fallacy, uh, a way to, to uh, not think bad. So that yeah, yeah. So that as we start to approach these things that uh, of the faith, uh, we're actually coming at it in a way that's not only going to hold up and make sense, but also be something that you can defend as you need to. So um, is that is that about right? Yeah, it's perfect. It's really it's really um, thinking about how you use the gift of your mind that God gave you and how to how to use it correctly. And so uh, all we're doing here is pointing out some. Um, fun things that people do that maybe aren't the best in arguments. And I feel like we're part of a talk show right now. Really? We're between two ferns and we've got our coffee mugs and, uh, and we didn't plan this, but we are color coordinated as well. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> anyway, kids. So, but today, today, today we are talking about the anecdotal fa fallacy. So I don't know if you're familiar, kids, with the word anecdotal. Do you think I should make Goodman define it for you? An anecdote is a story that somebody tells you. So back in my day, uh, when we had to learn about the word anecdote, mm -hmm. I had a teacher. I had when a dragons, uh, or not dragons, I, back, when, when, when dinosaurs rolled Back in the 1900s, okay. I walked to school, <laughs> like, and uh, I sat yeah. down in my schoolhouse, and the teacher told us, and so I learned, and so you should already know it too, anecdotal. Okay. Um, anecdotal. An anecdote is a story. So what's an anecdotal fallacy, though? Because stories are real things. Stories are real things, and they do happen to people, and they're interesting to hear about. However... Some of them. Some of them. That's true. <laughs> that's very true. There are some stories that are more interesting than others. So an anecdotal mm. fallacy <laughs> is uh, when someone uses a personal experience or story um, of an isolated event as though it, it uh, makes the argument valid. So in, in essence, you're using your story as proof of something. Okay. Yeah. So let me give you a, like an extreme example of that, if that's helpful. Okay. I always find the extreme starting first is helpful, and then we'll go to the theolo theological one. Um, so like, I don't know about you, but I used to play in, this sounds terrible, but like one of the places we used to play was in the street in my suburb neighborhood or whatever. But of course, that's not always safe. So, but... I, pl I went out and I played in the street and I didn't get hit by a car. Therefore, you can always play in the street. So it's something that could be true and maybe even was true once, but whether or not that's true all the time. Correct. So like that saying, I flipped a coin and it landed heads up. So right. obviously all coin right. flips will be heads up. So in that argument, I'm essentially saying it's always safe to play in the street. Right. right? I'm making the argument don't by play saying in the street, that. Kids. Yeah, don't. And we're not telling you to play in the street. Okay. Definitely not. Playing. So I mean, in but the same way, um, one of the things that we, we commonly run into in, inside of the church then is when we talk about our faith, it, it's something that is real and it's something that it is true. But if we just go by a story that was true, for us one time it doesn't necessarily actually affect anybody else or prove the whole to be true so for example um i was having just an awful day uh i i was uh, I, I got in a fight with my friends i felt alone i felt lost i felt like everything tuesday was falling apart it was like a tuesday yeah it was on a tuesday um and i prayed to god and you know what the rain stopped and a rainbow came out and then i knew that that god was real and you should believe in him too because of this. Right. Now, all of those things might actually be true, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's something that holds true for ever. So just because it stopped raining and I said words doesn't mean that God is real. Right. But if he rose from the dead and 500 some odd people saw it, right. that's a different place to start on. And then it's not simply one person's story, but it is a, a historical one fact that, that stands across multiple people seeing the same thing. Right. And that's great that you felt better and that mm -hmm. you prayed and, and all of those things, but that is, that's not an argument that's going to convince anyone of any sort of truth, right? Right. Because it's just me and it's just the right. one time. So if it's going right. to be just a one time thing, lots of people have to see it. Right. Or if it's going to be something that only one person sees, it has to be demonstrable over and over right. again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So a anecdotes, we use these all the time. I think these anecdotal ar arguments really frequently. Um, because if you personally didn't find something to be true, then you can't prove it to me, right? That's a really hard thing to argue against, right? right? Well, and it also puts us in a weird spot in that you didn't see Jesus rise from the dead right? and neither did I. So how am I supposed to go based on this thing as if it's true if 
my right. story doesn't line up with it? Can you have a truth that's apart from your personal lived experience? That's the real question. And, well, have you ever been to China? Right. Does China exist? Right. You can make the moon argument about that, right? Don't say that we've never landed on the moon, please. I'm, we never landed on the moon because I, I personally have never been there. So you can see why <laughs> anecdotal fallacies are problematic. Very and problematic. We should try not to use them. So what do you do then if somebody tells you a story and expects you to believe everything based on that one story? Well, let's use yours. Okay. Right? Let's use yours where you said, you know, I was having a terrible day. And you basically said this is evidence that there that there is a God. There is a God. And you can simply say to that person, well... I believe your story. I mean, I believe that you were having a bad day. I believe that you prayed and these good things happened. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of, and you can point out, that's kind of an, that's anecdotal. That's not proof to me of God's existence. There are lots of other things that mm -hmm. would be proof to me in the natural universe of God's existence rather than you praying and there being a rainbow. Although, could you do it again? I can't. So, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I will have another bad Tuesday, though. I bet um, you will. My day right now is getting worse, but because um, <laughs> you're talking to me, I guess. Um, <laughs> but so when you're you're gonna then give an argument to your faith, start with the scriptures uh, and, and not just your experience with them, because well, nobody else can have your experience with them, and, and so nobody else can quite have that story. And in the same way, uh, if you're interacting with somebody who's only giving you stories and and not the facts that go alongside of them, you can ask for something that could exist apart from them. So in other words, would there still be a God if I never prayed on Tuesday? If the answer is no, I need a better approach. And a better God. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think anecdotal fallacies are pretty pretty much the easiest, one of the easier ones to potentially point out. Um, and, and most people will go, yeah, you know, I guess that, that I only experienced that. Um, and again, not to invalidate anyone's lived experience. They experienced that. They, they clearly experienced that. You had a bad Tuesday again. You know, well, and stories that was a real are, thing. Stories are good. I mean, the Gospels are given to us in a narrative form. Uh, your stories are valid stories, and, and that's, that's great. The reason that, that God gives us the Scriptures in a story form is not so that we would reject it, but so that we would hold it up to a test from lots of views, lots of people, lots of, of experiences, and not just your own. Um, so it's great that you have stories. You, you should continue to. Yes. But we just can't make everything fall into them that one time because, well, what if there's a second story? Absolutely. Right. Anything else there? No, it was great. Hope you have a better Tuesday, even though it's not Tuesday. Thanks for teaching me to think good. <laughs> well. <laughs>